Hey, 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 hey. You like that song? Ooh, ooh, you see Spider-Man yet? All right, where am I? I, I didn't really like up to combing my hair and... <laughs> So you don't see me, but you hear me. But we are moving into week four, like running past mortals, right? All right, so going to week four, let's check out what we're doing, what we're doing, week two, week three. Do you got your homework done yet? Your homework's going to be coming up due. Hope you got it done. All right, week four is kind of weird because it's probabilities. All right, so I can see right here... Um, I don't know. It's kind of weird that we got we probably should have made each week that module So I know that part's kind of weird, but so anyway in week four when I go in right cheer week four module three, this is all probability stuff um, It's kind of fun because fun and games right the probability that you will not win the lottery the probability that the Jaguars will never make a Super Bowl <laughs> I said, yeah, that was funny, right? All right, so, but some of the problems can be a little complicated. So let's just look at this a little bit. La, 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 la. All right, so basic probabilities are how I always remember is you're, you're just basically taking the number that you want divided by everything that could happen. So, in other words, if I asked a group of people if they were Dallas Cowboy fans, if they are, they get an A in my class. Otherwise, hey. And 317 responded yes, and 112 said no. Well, 317 out of the total that I asked. Now, I know a lot of times um, people in general, not just students, like to write probabilities as percentages. Typically, you're going to leave them as decimal, okay, unless it asks you for a percentage. And just be careful how the lab wants you to actually round it. All right, um, two big key words in probability are or and and. Or means to add. And means to multiply. This is very important you get this down. A king or a queen, what's the probability you get a king? Well, there's four, one, two, three, four out of 52 total cards. Or you get a queen, four out of 52. And then here with the and, the multiplication. Now, one thing you're going to have to watch, and some of the problems will say without replacement. What that means is, think about this, the probability you draw a king and then you draw a queen. Well, wouldn't there just be 51 cards? So be sure you read when you're finding things like the ands and the ors, the probabilities. Are, are they actually replacing the card back? So in other words, this example would be you drew a king and you put it back in the deck. And then next you drew a queen. All right. So just something to be um, a little careful of there. All right, table probabilities, this is getting more now into the real world type stuff than just the, you know, probabilities of slot machines and playing cards and things that if you have actual data, you typically like to summarize it in a table and then you can answer questions based on the table. Like what's the probability out of this data that you would get a mail? Well, there's straight across 118 mails out of the total, 255. What's the probability of Mel and a Democrat? This is what we call the intersection, which is nice. It's actually the intersection of that cell. So Mel and Democrat. These are called marginal probabilities because they actually are in the margin, right? The 118. And then we, you need to be careful if you're given information ahead of time. What's the probability they're male given you already know they are a Democrat? And this is the conditional formula, the probability male given Democrat. I always remember it's just both of these, probability male and Democrat, divided by the probability of the given. That's how I've just always memorized these. Um, some students don't actually write the whole probabilities because you're going to see the 255s cancel, and you're just going to end up with the 22 divided by 99. So just be careful with the wording. If, if you know information ahead of time, this is different than just the male and Democrat. All right, a bag contains six red marbles, 10 white marbles, eight blue marbles. You draw four out at random without replacement. In other words, when you draw one, you don't put it back. 
So the probability they would all be red. I say this stuff in words, the probability the first one's red and the second one's red. And remember I told you and is multiplying. All right. And then notice that the bottom here is getting smaller because we're not replacing. And where do we get the six? Well, six red, five red, four, and so on. Probability exactly two red. Okay, so exactly two red would be, and this doesn't matter the order. You might say, well, what if the first one's red and the last one's red? Doesn't matter because of the and being multiplied. So the first one's red and the second one's red. Then this would be the leftover marbles, 10 plus 8, 18, and now we're down to 22, and then 17 out of 21. Now, a lot of times you have to be careful with these if you're writing out the actual probabilities, okay, because as you just heard me know, well, what if the first two are red? What if the first one and the third one? And I said it doesn't matter because you're multiplying. However, you have to think of all these different ways that that could actually happen. And that's why I'm multiplying by six. I don't mean for that last thing to come up there yet. So you might say, well, I understand this in parentheses, but why did you multiply by six? Because I could change the order, okay, even though what's in parentheses, you're going to get the same answer because you're, being, you're multiplying. But if I listed every way I would get exactly two red, I can see there's six ways. So I could either have written this down in different formats, six different ways, or it's kind of better just to list a roster listing of everything that can happen. Probability none are red. You really, 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 really want to learn the compliment. Not like, hey, you're looking really good today. Not that kind of compliment. So all probabilities must add to one. Think of something simple. You flip a coin. What, what are the two things that can happen? A heads and a tail. Half the time heads, half the time tails. What's one half plus one half? Uno, one. All probabilities must add to one. The reason you like this is sometimes you might have to add a hundred probabilities or you could do one minus the one probability. That's what we're doing here. What's the probability none are red? Well, why not take one minus the probability all were red and that would give us our answer, the complement. So again, kind of the complement is very important, but some students struggle with the meaning behind it. Fundamental counting principle. In fact, this is kind of funny. You always see uh, there was a Pizza Hut commercial where they talk about, you know, there's three different crusts, two different vegetables, five different meats, and so on. How many different pizzas could you actually have? And it's kind of funny to see something like this, but all you're doing is multiplying each. So if I wanted to list out every single different outfit here, I would have 60 different outfits. So it just shows you, you don't need all them clothes you think you need. All right. What's the probability I wear one? Well, one out of 60. Another thing be careful of is sometimes it will ask you for your answer as a fraction. Sometimes it will ask you for your answer as a decimal. So just be careful with that. All right. A factorial with an exclamation doesn't mean it's yelling at you means that you are multiplying from the number they give you all the way down to one. And this is one of these where we use for how many different ways could I arrange so many items? Okay. Well, think about it. If you have 12 DVDs, the first DVD can go. The second one, you got 11 choices, 10, and so on. Just a very quick way to multiply um, numbers from the start all the way to one. We actually use this, and I'll show you on the next slide, when we're dealing with putting things in order. So the only time you have to be careful with just straight multiplying is notice here that on my numerator, I have nine different letters, but what I'm doing, because I want distinguishable arrangements, I'm dividing out so there's three A's. It doesn't matter what order those A's are in, right? A, 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 still A, 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 unless you name them A1, A2, A3. And so that's why you're dividing each one of these out, and then the B's, and the 1C, and 3D's. And you'll learn later that, you know, the easy thing to do is try to cancel stuff. Like I canceled 3 into 9 three times, 2 into 8 four times. But hopefully you start to use technology, and you don't even do this by hand. So factorials are used in the formulas for combination and permutations. 
Combination is when order does not matter. Uh, I'm going to pick five of you to come to my party this weekend. Well, the first person picked doesn't mean they're my favorite. I just picked five of you. If I say I'm going to pick two of you and the first one picked is the president, the second one's the vice president, then order matters. So you can see from the factorial symbol what these look like. These are kind of good to work through by hand, one or two, so you kind of understand what's going on. So from a group of eight people, you randomly selected two. So my formula says the total, how many I selected, the total minus how many I selected. So notice I know eight factorials, eight times seven times six times five times four times three, and you might be, but hey, why didn't you keep going all the way to one? I know eight minus two is six factorial, and that will cancel. And then I just in, end up, and the two goes into eight, so I'm kind of doing the cancellation thing. So I can see there's 28 different ways. Find the probability they are the two oldest people in the group, but there's only one way to get the two oldest. And then permutations is where order matters. So it says you pick three digits at random without replacement and write them in the order picked. What is the probability you've written the first three digits of your phone number? Well, the first three digits of your phone number, the order matters, right? Otherwise, you're calling the wrong person. Do y'all even call people anymore? Text. We should say texting. All right, assume there are no repeats of the digits in your phone number. Ten ways, right? Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I did that on my fingers to get the first digit, nine to get the second, eight to get the next, and so on. So this is my permutation formula. Notice here we're not dividing. Here we're dividing repeats out. That's why the combination had that extra piece there. And so I can get 728, 20 ways. And then what's the probability I would actually get that? All right. Now, you didn't see me do much. You didn't see me do anything with Google Sheets, right? Um, there's not really a lot this week you could do. Now, what I did is I created a new tab. So you can click the little plus right there, add a sheet. And I created a probability tab. Okay, it's just, I don't know, I just thought, hey, it might be nice to have this. And then what you'll see in here is what I did is I made a cell, like, you know, my number of ways. And then here what I did is I used the factorial formula. So if I change this number and hit enter, notice that changed. And so it just kind of makes you a very quick way if you need to get factorials. Um, a lot of times you don't just use get factorials, you do combinations. So what I did here is I said, well, what are the total number? How many do you choose at a time? And based on that, I did a formula for both combinations, combination, the number chosen, how many you pick, or I'm sorry, the total number, and then how many you pick at a time and then permutations. So these are kind of nice because now I can go in here and 15 and four and notice my answers change. It just gives me a very quick way to do probabilities. If you have a TI calculator, there are very quick ways to do it in that as well. I just, you know, since you're gonna be using Google Sheets, I just put everything in Google Sheets, but I kind of leave that up to you. All right, so you got, you got lots to do, right? You got your homework problems to do. You have a quiz. Notice this week is a reflection. This is where you tell me how you feel. <laughs> no, not really. Basically, what you're going to do is tell me, you know, where are you struggling in the course? What, what do you like about the course? What do you not like about the course? And so that way I can kind of help you individually, okay, where you're struggling. So let's have a great week. Um, again, if you haven't finished module two, get that finished up. Do Monday, February the 11th, and then get started on your probability.